I'm Grayson Bort. I'm uh, the founder of Scythe, uh, the founder of Grimm, and the co-founder of the ICS Village. I'm Tom Van Norman, uh, co-founder of ICS Village and uh, senior VP at Grimm. So we run a village uh, down there uh, on industrial control systems. So if you want to get some hands-on experience, uh, which we're going to just quickly kind of give a high level on, please come on down. We can fuck up shit together. And the best part about it, since it's not production, we all know what it's like to not test in prod, right? <laughs> you can poison a fake water supply. Okay. Oh, right. mics. Do I need a mic? Or is, no. it, is it for recording? Yes. Oh. It's fine. <laughs> All right. So let's talk industrial control systems. Who knows what an industrial control system is? What's an industrial control system? Imagine that. What a good nerd answer. <laughs> Any computer that's at least 20 years old. <laughs> also correct. <laughs> no, but so why is that important to understand? Right? Most of us, it's easy to learn about information technology. This is part of why we wanted to put this talk together is because getting into industrial control systems isn't just something you can walk down to Best Buy and ask for a HMI or a DCS or any of those things. You're not going to be able to do it. Now, strangely, you can buy them all on eBay. We're going to get to that, right? So it's, it's more of this like obfuscated, obtuse discipline that it's like, I'm interested, but how do I get to it? And so that's why, yeah, exactly. That's why we're talking about it today. So that joke when we go back to industrial control systems already sets the condition how it's so different than information technology, right? You're trained to buy a phone every two years. Your laptop has a problem. You patch it, you buy a new one, right? It's not expensive, it's easy to do. You're used to doing that. In the industrial control system environment, these things are not built on confidentiality, integrity, and availability, which are the security principles you've been taught in IT. It's built on resilience and availability. Because what happens when water's not available? You wanna give a nerd answer to that? <laughs> Bad shit. <laughs> Bad shit happens, right? So. This is a completely different world with a completely different impact. Here's the good news. It's not as hard as it sounds. So we're gonna, we're gonna talk through some of those pieces and we're gonna explain, kind of give you an idea of how the architecture works, um, how threats work, and then we're gonna talk through some specific examples of how you can start to build your own lab and learn some of those things. And you gotta try yeah. So the one thing that I always talk about with industrial control systems, why or how are they different than I, or IT, other than being really old. Health, life, and safety. Those are the three things, right? Your, your email goes out. What happens? You have a quiet day, right? Uh, your website goes down, you lose money. You're, you know, it's a bad day. Amazon, all, you know, Delta we saw, bad day. Those controllers go down and your, your grid turns off or your water plant turns off. That's, a, you know, health, life, and safety. So th those are the three things that I always go back to uh, when we talk about control systems. IT, you can turn that stuff off. You'll have a bad day, you'll have a quiet day. You're not gonna kill people. You're not gonna pollute the environment. You're not gonna destroy things and you know, hurt people. Way to bring us down, man. I know, how about it? You made me run all the way downstairs Dude. up to here and we were lost. <laughs> we were lost for five minutes. We could not figure out where this place was. Um, so here's the good news. This is why it's easier. Besides the fact that everything is older and actually much simpler, I forgot my point. been here seven days and Black Hat was really long, okay? Is there's a physical effect, right? Hey, I pop shell, I have an interpreter session. Okay, hey, data got lost. What does that mean? How do I feel that? With industrial control systems, there is a physical change in the world, right? The lights go off, the light bulb goes on, right? We're not popping calc.exe in a Windows box. You're actually seeing something change. So there's a lot more of that physical feedback loop on the learning. So how is it set up? Who's heard of the Purdue model? We've got some hands, all right. We've got ringers. What's the Purdue model? I'm no expert, but it's just a model. That there are no experts. <laughs> so this just shows um, where the sensors exist versus where your engineer and force station and stuff like this. It comes shifting mm -hmm. between OT and IT and how it fits in the device. Data segmentation, data flow? Pretty much. It's engaged first. 
<laughs> so I meant the words that are the correct answer. No, you, you, you got it. So it is a nominal enterprise architecture and it breaks down five levels. The first, you all know, IT. And IT is just one box. And then there is always, I want you to all repeat with me, an air gap. Air gap. Is not an air gap. Is not an air gap. <laughs> your IT will always talk to your OT. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I've always had, I always love it when there's some nerd who's like, well, actually, have you ever like been in a nuclear power plant? I'm like, yep, that air gap is never pure either. There's a reason, okay? So let's just understand that. Next level up are is your DMZ. So you need shared service functions because there's still some level of IT functionality. There's centralized management that we need to be, to be running these things. So that's your high level industrial control systems. Then we start breaking down into what are called, you know, specific control zones. And so that's basically two, one, zero. And that's where we have this combination of engineering workstations, programmable logic controllers, the things that are actually making a process do a thing. Again, going back to my original point, that process has an output. That's the cool part about this. Those subsystems are outputting something. And so the th purpose of the Purdue model is understanding that segmentation and then learning how to design what are called control zones and conduits. How do I create segmentation so that if there is an issue on this output over here that is spitting out this widget, it doesn't impact something over here? And then the conduits are my way of driving still the information, the data flow that I need to have between them. Now, here's the problem. I just said five levels of something. Doesn't that just feel like defense in depth? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you were shaking no because you knew where I was going. The correct answer is in fact, yes. There are no trick questions, just dumb answers. <laughs> Glad you all get my sense of humor. So the point is that all collapses into what we really see from the threat perspective. So there's basically two ways, well, there's actually five ways in, but we're gonna simplify it to the two common. The one which you probably hear the most and gets the most press play is, oh my gosh, my operational technology devices are directly connected to the internet. Look at what Shodan or Census turned up. Ooh. Yeah, it happens, but it's not the most common access vector. The most common access vector is what you see in most of your daily enterprise IT lives. Because IT is the big squishy thing on the internet. That's its entire purpose. And I'm not gonna guess you're all model employees, so you're not just surfing the web instead of doing your jobs. Take the credit, that's about the nicest thing I'm gonna say to you all day. We can go back to Dr. Doom here if you want. <laughs> so all of those tactics that you see in IT are the same ones that we have to worry about. They come in, they pivot, they move, and again, because an air gap is not an air gap is not an air gap, I cross over. Now, we still have three, three to four levels, actually four levels, on that side, but here's where they all collapse. So you're all aware of the like gloom and doom cyber weapons, right? We know about Indestroyer, Indestroyer 2, we've seen the Russian military using in Ukraine. That's not the thing we have to worry about most. The same way that PowerShell pretty much defines what happens in IT. Same thing in OT. It's the living off the land, taking over those high level industrial control systems. They tell everything else what to do. So now we've anchored how this works, what we got to worry about, now let's talk about how we start to teach ourselves. Labs. So if anybody has not been down the ISS village downstairs, back in the corner, please stop by. We'll show you what we have, our, our, our hands on demos. Yes, we know where that is. And it's far, but not that far. It's not in another, another building, right? So the, uh, how do we build these systems? How, how do we build in an environment where we can train? We can, we can, see if our patches work. That's a really important one. Never patch production, right? Uh, live anyway, you want to patch production, but you want to test those patches before you push it out or things happen. Uh, how do we do that? Well, with ICS Village and, and my day job and all that, we build these systems out. So what we've been doing, uh, we don't use virtualized systems. We'll use virtualized systems when it, when it should be used, such as HMIs and things like that, right? They're, they're all virtualized, they're just window assets. When we get down to controllers, 
we're using the real ones, right? We're not using Raspberry Pi. Sure, you can use Open PLC, you can do all these other ones. But the reason why we're not doing that downstairs in the United States villages, there's, they, they just don't work the same. So when you go out and you want to learn how these systems work, whether you're interested in the control system to get a job in it or you're a working uh, practitioner or professional now in it, how do you do this? We source stuff from eBay. We source stuff from, from our vendors. We get stuff donated to us. Uh, but how can I buy something from eBay? How would I make that work for home? The, the, uh, so I wouldn't recommend that actually. <laughs> the, the, the problem is that, that we run into, you buy that thing from eBay. Well, great. Now you need a license. Now you need a key. Now you need that thing. You need that thing. You need that cable, all that stuff. That stuff's not trivial. Once you're using it, yes, now you understand. But for somebody to take that thing from, you know, that Allen Bradley controller from, from, eBay that you bought for 150 bucks, oh, well, where's the cable? Where's the license? Where's that? So that gets quite difficult. Come volunteer for ICS Village. We'll show you how to do that stuff. We can get you connected with different universities or colleges, learning institutions, uh, show you how to do that. Uh, we, we, one of the things that, you know, we're constantly saying to people when they, when they come up, they're saying, hey, where do I start? What do I do? We're looking at authentication. We're looking at segmentation. We're looking at knowing what's on your network. Well, what does that even mean? Uh, so, you, you know, whether you're going to walk down your, 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 your plant floor, whether you're going to take PCAPs, whether you're going to do something, know, know what's on your network, your asset detection. Uh, authentication, don't leave everything admin, admin. However, that's a legitimate thing now. You go into that, uh, uh, you know, nuclear plant, like Bryson just talked about here. Well, you have guard gates and guns and you're seven layers down. Does it really matter at that point if your sticky note has that? I don't think it does. Because if, if your adversary's in there that far anyway, you, you, you're, you're done. But what you need is to be able to get into that HMI or get into that thing really quick to turn that thing off or on or, or whatever. So it's, it's a balance, right? If you're, if you have a, a gateway device, no, don't use admin admin. That's really bad complicated passwords. Uh, and then segmentation. You know, th those are the three things that, that we come back and say, hey, you do those three things, you're going to make your life or your network so much more secure. Do we have a lot of other things after that? Yes, but those are the three things that we keep on going back. So how does that tie in with labs? Well, how do you patch something? How do you go and change that password? How do you update that X509 cert or, or whatever cert you have? That's not trivial. If you're doing it, okay. That, that works, but now come back three years later and learn how those certs work and how you updated that. Guarantee, unless you're doing that on a day by day, you're not gonna figure it out. But now it's running a real production device. So it's, uh, sorry, here they're yelling at us to get off the stage now. Anyway, we came late. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. Come downstairs, ICS Village. We have a lot of really great volunteers down there. Bryce and I are, are down there. Uh, We'll show you what's going on. We will do all that stuff. He's yelling at me again the second time he's come in. That guy in the red shirt, yelling at the guys that were late. Thank you, everyone. Our apologies for coming up here and doing this. Yes, yes, yes. Ashley, yes. So it's not. What we do, we go off of usually like SANS critical controls, we go off of industry things because why? They work, they're right, they, that's what you need. Yep, yep we're happy to do yep, that. Yep, we're done, we're, we're done. Out. Thank you.